yeah. I mean, honestly, we got this kick-ass laptop. We might as well use it to play newer games other than just yeah. Skyrim, which is like 10, 11 years old at this point. One of those years video, old. One of the video games I've been playing a lot of these stupid workout games I keep buying. <laughs> Did you know the sh- the show is almost as old as Skyrim? Oh my god! Oh, good point. This show, yeah, yeah. I know. Welcome to Undercooked Analysis. We're almost as old as Skyrim, and yet Great neither of you love. have re-released the HD upgraded editions of Undercooked Analysis. You are missing out <laughs> on be- such profit. Hey, to be fair, to be fair, we can't all just magic. I would have done it if I'd become YouTube famous, but no. <laughs> Look. Look, okay, I'm I'm gonna make an executive decision now. Um, this is the new HD remaster of UCA, so um, the patrons get it for free. The rest of you, uh, I do expect some money in the coffers. And next week we'll be <laughs> re-releasing the Ultra HD remaster with one last bug. <laughs> so enjoy that. Yep, you gotta you gotta hunt for the bug though. Where is that bug? It's a bug. <laughs> this is a bug hunt, man. <laughs> Oh my god! Another. Uh, are you going to talk about the fact that the song "Bug Hunt" um, yes. from, from <laughs> Wreck It Ralph was never released? The greatest so fucking de- dubstep movie track of all goddamn time has never seen the light of day, except really rough fan edits. And oh my god, I'm so angry because I love Wreck It Ralph. I haven't seen Me the too. second one, but like I love that first movie so much, and I remember getting like so goddamn hyped when I heard that in the theaters for the first time. And it was such a fucking good song. Oh my God. Yeah. This is one of those magical moments that just will, I don't know what the fuck Disney ultra yeah. HD re-release of Wreck-It Ralph with <laughs> includes in the special features bug hunt by itself. I will. And I will rip it from the fucking DVD and just record it separately. And be like, okay, I spent $50 for one MP3. I don't care. <laughs> At least I have it now. Honestly, the one just, disappointing thing about um that adam's family new cartoon movie that came out three years ago not the sequel to whatever when they had the trailer they had a like epic version of the adam's family theme that i'm like oh my gosh this Mm. slaps i want this and i thought okay maybe it'll be released with the movie no it they made this only for the trailer are you fucking kidding me i i hate trailers so much Because if they're not misleading you on the actual quality of the movie, they're featuring content that's not in the movie. And like that, I'm not a lawyer, but that sounds like a deceptive business practice to me. (laughs) You are literally advertising something that is not in the final product. By the way, if you want it, it's, I was thinking about, I think about that a lot when they use licensed music in trailers, Mm. which they do every single day now, every single trailer. You don't usually hear that song in the movie. No. 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 So Mm. so here's the deal. In this ultra high def HD uh, remaster of Undercooked Analysis brought to you by Metroid Prime for Nintendo Switch. (laughs) (laughs) You want to talk about a game with a good sci-fi aesthetic? Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually thinking I might. I never did finish the original GameCube version. I didn't own it. So I think it's fair if I ever wanted to pick it up. I, I, I enjoyed playing it. Um, anyway, it's not actually sponsored. Uh, I am, I am David. I'm Kayla. And playing the part, uh, play, stepping in for the remake to play Alan Chaney is Abysme. Hello. I know you're all going to miss the original voice lines, but, uh, I'm being paid a lot of money for this, so I don't <laughs> care. We, we had to really shell out in that Patreon money to get there. You know what I mean? Bring Abysme took, on. Yeah. Abysme on. <laughs> Abysme costs a lot. You have no idea. <laughs> I do. I do. Um, it takes a lot of money to get my ass out of bed in the morning. <laughs> so what are we... Uh... Well, uh, you'll be happy to know that uh, as we are moving forward here, I have a story sent to us once again by Cthulhu Photog- itself. Cthulhu <laughs> Photogen. Oh, yes. my God. Yeah. So this is actually... I've, I've been saving this. Yeah. Uh, even Not necessarily knowing the story, but saving this because knowing how... Uh, Cthulhu uh, and and you in your you know beautiful relationship is uh, mm. I wanted to make sure that uh, you were here and present for this. Um, what they write uh, to us that full moon or a description of a fish I have seen. This is another dose of Lovecraftian goodness with a healthy dollop of longing over lost loves to boot. And this one was written by and credited to Kite Line. 
Hmm. Uh, and this is written with the permission. Well. Yes, this was we were we were granted permission to uh, to read these on uh, UCA. Okay, cool. So yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it now. Hopefully, I'm wrong, but when I hear fish and Lovecraft, I think deep ones. So maybe that'll be the uh, the link here. Maybe not. We'll see. Day gone. Day gone. Day gone. <laughs> Well, I guess we'll see how it goes. I figured we'd just dive right in because it is, it looks like it's got some interesting formatting here Although the, uh, based on what I'm seeing. The wild, yeah. part, the wild part about uh, the fish we can dig on is the fact that like what they, it's, they don't start changing until they're in their fifties and then they're like oh, on the verge of like old age. And then they're like, oh yeah, we're fish people now. Let's go into the ocean. You know, I'm kind of good with that though. It's a great <laughs> alternative to getting old is instead you get fish. Hey man, if if it's you know retire at seventy five or become a fish person, I'll probably go fish person. Dude, I'd, I'd go fish person. <laughs> yeah, I'll go live in the sea and have yeah. gills. That's that wild because like you're the oh it starts early. No, it's the the transformation in in the books or the story starts at like fifty or whatever. I'm fifty like, what ain't even that old these days. Like back yeah. then, oh yeah, that was old. Nowadays, no. Like you're still working when you're fifty. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, but that's when it starts. Like mm -hmm. you see changes. It still takes time. Well, if you know it's coming, then you get to your 50th birthday. You notice your your first couple of scales start to appear on your skin. You're like, sweet. Hell yeah. <laughs> I was prepared for this. All right, let's do this. Okay. Uh, so yeah, full moon or a description of fish I have seen. I actually kind of think I already like the title. Yeah, uh, me too. So how are you, what order are we going to do? Well, it's in kind of sort of chapters, even though it's oh. like clearly it's clearly a, a short story. So it's broken into segments. Um, How long are each chapter? The they're not very long. Do we, do we each want to take a section? Some are longer than others, um, but I think in the beginning we could take sections and we can just uh, chop the longer ones in half if we need to. OK, yeah. that sounds good. Uh, Who's going to start this shindig? Uh, I can start if you all, if you're all good with that. Yeah, David, Kayla, me would work. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so this first part is titled just one. It's you. I can't believe it's really you. It has to be. It has to be. I am writing to you because I have discovered I'm writing to you to talk about happy. happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, um, oh, fuck. <laughs> I am writing to you because you exist. If you did not exist, I would not be writing to you. And I do not wish to live in a reality where that is the case. I don't know where you've been, but I'm looking at you right now from across the shore. Even from so far away, I could still make out all of your features. You're just as I remember you. You haven't aged a day. You have no idea how badly I want to swim out to meet you. I would give anything to hold you in my arms again. But unfortunately, my boat has long since sunk, taking by, taken by something in the sea. And there is no way I would be able to swim that far to be with you. I am isolated here, trapped in the lighthouse on our tiny island. Oh shit, gang! Oh no, it's a lighthouse. <laughs> this is just this is just uh, Robert Pat. <laughs> this is Robert Pattinson writing to the mermaid he sees in his dreams. <laughs> Get me off this island! I'm stuck with this old man who farts a lot. <laughs> um, great way to sum up. <laughs> so, so I, I might you're have not to wrong. settle for this old man who farts a lot. So, that that is what the movie is about. So, um, I remember reading somewhere that uh. Uh, a portrait of a girl on fire is what happens when two women are stuck together alone, whereas the lighthouse is what happens when two men are stuck together. <laughs> accurate, <laughs> very accurate. Yes, <laughs> one leads to lesbianism, the other just leads to farting and and death and, and death and violence. What are we gonna do? I think I buried like a crate of vodka underneath the fucking uh, six feet of goddamn earth. Let's go dig it up. <laughs> <laughs> now it all was going well until. Uh, he tried to kill me with an axe. Mm. <laughs> uh, we will communicate in writing for now. The sea may not be who she used to be, but I trust her to guide these bottles, uh, bottled letters to you. Maybe the old girl still has it in her to, in her infinite heart to steer two wayward souls together again. If you are reading this letter, then thank her for me, will you? You still love fish, right? Thing is, with all the big changes recently, I've been seeing some real interesting new fish show, show up that I've never seen before. Some of them I can't make heads or tails of. Maybe you've seen them too. I figure that with each letter I send you, I could tell you a little about some of the new fish I, that I've seen or in, interacted with. 
Hopefully you'll be familiar with some of them and be able to tell a little more of them. At the very least, it will give me something to tell about, uh, talk with the, bleh, bleh, I'm so sorry. Where's give my... us something to talk about. With <laughs> give the, us something to talk, talk about. about with each other or anyone for that matter. I will bottle this letter and cast it out to sea. I hope it reaches you. I'm looking at you right now, actually. Way over there in that distant sandbar that, that I've never noticed before. You're looking right at me, but you don't seem to notice me. I do hope you've been well. I have so many questions for you, your dear so, friend. So this right person... Off the, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. I, I just I, want to say, right off the bat, the line, the sea isn't what it used to be, is really cool. I like that. That is. Yeah. I like I like this already. Mm-hmm. No, it's I but I'm just imagining he he sees this person and throws it into like it's a message in a bottle and it's like I'm hoping it will get to you and you he's witnessing this or they are witnessing this. We don't know who the what the gender is. And you just suddenly see the ocean move it and they're like, No, no, no <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, go that way to her, to her Message in a bottle. <laughs> Two red or fish, <laughs> one fish, two fish, red or fish, two <laughs> or fish. Sorry, <laughs> the or fish in this region have grown to immense lengths, sometimes stretching into the depths for as far as the eye can see. It's not hard to see why fishermen of old regard them as sea serpents. They ascend from the ocean floor vertically and hang in the position with their almost hand like faces pointed towards the surface of the water as if watching the sky. These oarfish are bioluminescent and glow a very deep shade of crimson. Cool. They... Neat. These are some badass fish. Oarfish uh, are fucking like like eels. They're 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 creepy as hell. We, we've we've caught we've caught a couple in Animal Crossing. Oh, that's oh, right. nice. Yeah, I forgot about that. There's there's one in the museum, and it does that. It floats with its head toward the surface. When they gather into groups, they look like a series of immense red arms emerging from the dark ocean floor. Occasionally, they will flex their bodies in unison, creating a sharp piercing sound, almost like a sun thunderclap. Watch me flex, bro. <laughs> Boom! In the blackness of the permanent night, they are both haunting and beautiful. True. I hope my first letter reached you safely, otherwise this letter will seem strange. <laughs> Rather strange. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, mother. Hello, father. Here I am at Camp Granada. If so, I apologize. You haven't written back yet, and I will. But I will. I still see you there. Why don't you walk to this person? What the? Well, fuck? I don't. We'll, we'll find out, buddy. Water carries sound. Just yell <laughs> if you can see them. Just yell. Make a hey, fire. Hey, you. <laughs> are you guys? How are you surviving out there? There doesn't seem to be any source of flood or fil- uh, filtered drinking water. No shelter. Nothing at all. But you. And the sand. Even I have trouble finding edible food, as it's near impossible to find recognizably, recognizably edible or normal fish anywhere. And I found these pale little fish. God, I've said the word fish so many times. Mm. It's well, look, Kayla. A fish is a normal fish, and it and it swims <laughs> in a pond or a creek, and it doesn't exist. <laughs> it's a side dish served with chips, and it's also not a boomerang fish. Oh my god, I want fish and chips now. <laughs> Uh, they taste real weird and some really messed up side of effects. <laughs> if I can figure out a way to come rescue you and bring you back, I will. Please take care of yourself, your dear friend. Uh, I could speculate on who this is and who they're talking to and where they are, but it's almost more enjoyable to just let the mystery unfold in the story. Mm-hmm. What if they're talking to a corpse on a sandbar? Oh, Ooh. maybe. That could be cool. And then we have a page break with a poem. poem? Things were simpler back then. Sun still shone in the sky. Face shone like the sun. Winds breathed. Waves lived. We breathed with the wind. We lived with the waves. I feel like I should actually sound more like a pirate. Uh, Hold on, I'm trying to... um, Get your best Cornish accent. (laughs) We danced in the sunlight. We rested in the moonlight. We were so carefree. On the night we confessed, we planted an apple tree. Years passed, night fell, clear skies. The apple tree glowed in the moon's light. A single apple. Like a prism. It was perfect, ripe, fresh, pure, 
You plucked the apple from the tree and took a bite. There was a worm inside of it. Oh, shit. Interesting. So oh, interesting. That's, yeah, that, that's ominous. This that is, was all good up until that last uh, couplet. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm still not entirely sure what's coming up, going on, but I kind of, I'm kind of in for the surreality. I, I, I'm liking the style of this. It's, yeah, I, I, yeah. I like Lovecraftian style. Allows you to be verbose and flowery and weird. And, you know, you you shouldn't question it given that context and you can get away with things that you can't in kind of more and other typical styles of writing. I It feels like this takes place in an, an older time period, but what kind Hard of to hell? Yeah. The one thing that it, uh, it said they taste real w- weird and have some really messed up side effects. That's a very modern thing to say, though. This is kind of out of time and place. Um yeah, mm-hmm. which a lot of Lovecraftian literature does put you into um, when you true. when you when you cross the threshold, time and reality get very very non Euclidean and skewed. True. <clears throat> Three dead moonfish, pale circular fish about the size of an outstretched palm. Their eyes are large and take up both sides of their bodies. They are normally docile and lethargic and don't seem to mind being picked up or handled, despite being ninety percent eyeball. Oh yeah, this is a very modern way of uh, writing i named them after how well they reflect the light of the moon in their eyes as well as for how limp they are when handled every yeah. specimen i have caught appears to have a scar running along the rear of end of its body as if a piece was cut off of it or maybe it was once attached to something larger in an earlier part of its life cycle oh, kind of like a anglerfish like how they <clears> mate <throat> when the fish when this fish sees its own reflection in the water it trembles slightly under no Ooh. circumstances should you show this fish its reflection under the light of the full moon. In other news, I saw something strange outside my bedroom window. Bedroom window? They did oh, mention duh. they were staying in a lighthouse, right? Oh, duh. I already forgot that. Sorry. That's all it, right. It was a fishing boat with a small group of people on it, slowly and aimlessly drifting along in the sea nearby the island. This is the first boat I've seen in months. I didn't even know anyone was left up here. Excited, I ran outside to greet them and call them over, but they didn't appear to hear my shouting despite how close they were. I wonder if this person's a ghost. Ooh, maybe. Oh, interesting. The people aboard all looked deathly thin, and their clothes were tattered and disheveled, like they had been lost at sea for who knows how long. They were all standing perfectly still in the boats as they drifted along, looking up at the moon with wide, outstretched arms, awesome, and peaceful smiles on their faces. They were like statues. They're like transitioning to the afterlife or something maybe i don't know this is wow this is weird well, no matter moon, how much of us oh sorry go ahead no it's not, i mean the full moon has made a move it's made its motif more clear now here than ever but also yeah. earlier with the poem like yeah it's intriguing no matter how much of a scene i made i could not get their attention and they eventually floated away and out of sight beyond the horizon the reason i'm bringing this up is because i found their dead bodies washed ashore on the island tonight Okay, so we're not in the afterlife, but this region is luring people to their death. Seemingly. Yeah. Marooning I, people. I mean, mm. it, it could be that this person is dead, but I mean, but yeah, mm. this isn't, you're right, this isn't the afterlife. What's We don't know yet. Their mm. faces were ripped clean off, and the insides of their heads were scooped clean, brains and all. I Whoa. buried them not too far Shit. from the lighthouse, whoever they were. I'm not quite sure what to think of the whole event, but I suppose it's no stranger than anything else that has happened up to this point. <laughs> you were watching me as I finished patting down the soil on their graves, and I waved to you. But even you are like a statue sometimes, with how little you seem to move over there. You simply continue to stare. Yeah, I think they're talking to a dead body. Please write back soon, your dear friend. Mm-hmm. Four. Chorus fish. This school of melodic fish never fails to wake me up at night with the strange sounds they make. I can see them well from my bedroom window, and the height gives me a great vantage point to see just how large of a school they gather. They travel in a huge snake-like school that extends across the surface of the ocean. They are an odd-looking fish. I've never seen one up close as they always travel in a tightly packed school, but they seem to bear a similarity to a type of now-extinct koi whose faces resemble that of a human's. Is this person a marine biologist? Maybe. Hmm. hmm. I, I really don't know what to make of this yet. It's it's so surreal. It, But it does paint a very cozy 
picture because there's not a lot. They haven't revealed too much to make us question too much. Yeah, they're 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 striking a very good balance of there's a lighthouse, there's the ocean, they're on an island, they can see someone, things pass in and out. There's a lot of fish. That's really it. Um, yeah. how they got there, not important. Where exactly they are to be revealed, but like they are, you get the sense that they are fixating on. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do or where I am. So, hey, look, cool fish. I'm going to focus on that so I don't lose my mind. Yeah, <laughs> and I will write to you because I can see you, whoever this person I'm is, um, I'm longing for or whatever. Any, anything to, like, get to, to ward off isolation. Yeah. I mean, we, we saw the insanity that in, uh, resulted in the lighthouse. I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is it about? I, I, you know, that's the great thing about stories, especially horror stories about the sea. They tend to get pretty um, existential and surreal and just by dint of what you're dealing with, you know? So I don't know. Have you ever been to the Cabrillo lighthouse in San Diego? Uh, I have not been to the Cabrillo lighthouse. It's uh, it's up the road from my, 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 my ancestral home uh, where I grew up. <laughs> um, but it's off, it's on the peninsula at the end okay. of the uh, peninsula. And it's, uh, it's very old. It's one of the oldest structures of like when San Diego was a town, you know, uh, post Native oh. American, of course, but uh-huh. um, it's, like it and Old Town are about the same age, and uh. to make the trip from the lighthouse to Old Town essentially took a day. Wow. And so they would not; they would only go in for like you know supplies on a regular basis, but that's not a frequent trip they would make. So right. they were, and it, it was like a man and his wife. They were isolated from other people for most of the time. And even they could at least be like, well, if we have to, we can ride into town. It's going to take fucking forever, but Mm -hmm. we're going to do it. And I think like a lot of media around lighthouses focuses on that because it is remote. Even if you're on the mainland, you're out on a place that has to be somewhat isolated and remote to serve your purpose. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Like you're always, even at the closest, you might be able to see civilization from where you are. Like you could be on like a, a pinnacle at the mouth of a bay. And maybe further into the bay, there's a town, you know, yeah, a harbor. But it's still going to be a ways from the lighthouse. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's interesting. Yeah, the lighthouses just evoke feelings of isolation and uh, loneliness, but majesty at the same time. If, if depending on you know, oh, absolutely. what lighthouse, you're in. yeah, absolutely. Oddly, they all seem to swim vertically, gathering at the surface of the water, sticking their heads above the surface to sing together. I've never been able to see their bodies, only their heads. They make these really beautiful sounds, like a chorus of people singing hymnals. They are loud enough to take, uh, they're loud enough with their singing that they wake me up at, that it wakes me up at night, but beautiful enough that it is easy for me to relax and drift back to sleep. It's quite a sight, really. A huge row of faces flowing and curving along the surface of the ocean. He's seen some of the weirdest fucking fish no right kidding. now. I want to play this video game. Me too. <laughs> this has, this has, um, <laughs> This is big walking sim energy, but in a good way. This is like if um, Subnautica wasn't a fucking horror game. <laughs> That'd be cool, actually. Yeah. Um, I've often rushed outside during these their songs to see if you are there are there watching too. But you seem to disappear at night. Where you go, I am not sure, because there doesn't seem to be anywhere for you to go on that sandbar. How have you survived this long? Where did you go when you disappeared? I have so many questions for you, and I miss you dearly. If I had the strength to swim out there and to rescue you, I would. I want you to come home. Sometimes I get frustrated that you haven't written back yet. But then I remember that you probably aren't receiving these letters anyway. And even if you were, you have nothing to write with or on. I shouldn't give up hope. I refuse to believe that isn't you out there, that you're simply a hallucination or a figment of my lonely imagination. But still, none of this makes any sense. I need to sleep. Your dear friend. Mm-hmm. Okay, so maybe there wasn't anyone in the first place. Ah, and they're coming to terms with that at least in their writing. Yeah. Uh, do we? Should I take the the poem? Uh, the poem yeah. Bit? I mean, it's it's double space, so yeah, it won't yeah. take yeah. long. And, and it's just like short sentences. <clears> so. <throat> mm-hmm. It was late at night. You couldn't sleep. You woke me and took me outside. The night was still. The air was soft. The sky was clear. The world is asleep. You grabbed my hand. 
We ran into the forest behind the lighthouse. We ran and ran, until we reached the clearing in the middle of the forest. You collapsed on your back on the soft grass. I followed suit. We stared at the clear sky, at the stars, at infinity, still holding hands. As the night progressed, the moon slowly floated over the clearing. You told me how romantics and dreamers would see their own heart would see what their hearts desired most when they looked at the moon. So we looked. You never told me what you saw, what you desired most, but I could feel the way it warmed you, and I was warmed through you. When I looked up at the moon on that night, I could see only you, my dear friend, my lighthouse keeper, my moonlight. Oh. Number one, awe. Number two, aw. is this... Does lunacy play a part in this? Lunacy. Oh. Mm. Mm-hmm. I oh, bet. Shit. I bet. Maybe. Actually. Because we have the moonfish who definitely react to the moon itself. Interesting. We also have the people in the boat who are staring at the yeah. moon. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Chapter five. Towers. I went scuba diving today for the first time in quite a while. The area of the ocean that surrounds the island, I've nicknamed it the Zone of Avoidance because of how empty of life it is. This place once teeming with life before the world changed, but now it's just empty. There it is again. Hmm. A huge, totally silent vibe. The void. Vibe. (laughs) Not to go with that totally silent vibe. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's an aesthetic. Yeah, silent. It's, it's almost like a massive underwater desert. I mean, it is a silent vibe. Uh, nothing but rolling hills of sand pocketed by the occasional crater that go at least half a mile deep, if not longer. There isn't any sunlight anymore, so exploring the ocean requires a powerful light. Or a really powerful light. The old lighthouse isn't seeing much use anymore, so I was able to disassemble the light and use it as a general purpose spotlight. Whoa. Whoa. How? <laughs> Okay. Seriously, how? Aiming it into whatever part of the ocean I wanted to explore next, even though they are basically the same. All the, they are all basically the same now. Oh, so they're not they're not pointing it in the distance. They're somehow modifying it so they can aim it toward the ocean. Oh, so it's still so they dive where the light is pointing. Well, that's I mean, I, kind of pointless to question it, but literally speaking, those things are on like they go in a circle. They don't go up and down as far as right. angles. Like how the how the fuck did you do that? This bow, you know? Lovecraftian. Somehow. <laughs> we're still not we're still not sure what world we're in right now. This feels this doesn't feel like the like present day or or what I mean is it, it doesn't feel like the real world. It's out of time and space, yeah. They, yeah. They, yeah. They're somewhere weird. They're stuck on relay. Who knows? <laughs> um uh, where was I? Um, the third paragraph. As I was swimming out closer to the region with the craters, there was something different this time. I could sense a presence, a shape, or a mass in the water in the area ahead. <gasps> Cthulhu. <laughs> as I drew, as I drew nearer, and since many of them, oh, not Cthulhu. I'm not sure how to. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm not sure how to describe this feeling, but it's almost as if I could feel a displacement in the water created by something new that was taking up space. Curious, I pressed forward. Oh, that's it, really cool. Mm. Feeling a displacement in the water would have to be something very big. Yes. In the distance, out of the very edge of my vision, a series of shapes slowly materialized in the void, becoming clearer as I drew closer. In the middle of each of the craters was a tall, white, monolithic structure stretching almost to the surface of the ocean. A series of towers dotting the barren landscape of the void. They were like stone structures, but something about them felt alive. Awesome. Cool. Mm-hmm. That, that, with- that is very Dagon, um, underwater monoliths. Yeah. Very, very Dagon. Uh, swimming closer to one of them, I realized they were composed entirely of hundreds, if not thousands, of white sphere- spheres about the size of a basketball, almost like large pearls. They felt like glass and were extremely cold to the touch. Oh, he actually touched them. Jeez. Mm. Oh, jeez. At the top of each of the towers was a large circular gap just large enough for a person to swim through. However, this is a this gap is where the structure's temperature was at its coldest. Sticking my arm into the gap caused it to go completely numb from the cold. Dangerous for swimming, obviously. I briefly entertained the notion of swimming through the hole, but 
knew that would that doing so would probably lead to my unconscious shortly unconsciousness shortly followed by drowning. As I continued to explore the sea of meg, uh, megaliths, there was a there was movement in one of the spheres. I was able to remove the sphere from the tower without great up wait. So they they took the sphere out. They took a move, oh oh a like one of the okay one of the yeah pearl without thing. great after and the wriggling of the object made me realize that I was holding what I was holding on to was not a pearl or a stone of any kind. It was an egg. Oh, oh shit. shit! Well, you fucked up. <laughs> all those towers, all of those spheres, they were egg clusters. Something enormously large must have laid these. Oh, maybe it is Cthulhu. <laughs> well, I don't. Well, eh, eh. since the last time I was out there. But something so gargantuan couldn't possibly have eluded my attention for that long. I no longer felt safe. Clutching the cold, small object, I was luckily able uh, to swim back to the island without incident. If this truly was an egg, then maybe it could be edible. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> yes, eat the creepy egg. Another source <laughs> of food is always welcome. No! I want oh, that to be cool. one of all my, my all-time great quotes. Put it on a shirt. Yes, eat the creepy egg. <laughs> David 2023. <laughs> DCK Always 2023. eat the egg. <laughs> Upon reaching the shore, I grabbed a nearby rock and smashed open the oh my god Damn. The egg to see what was inside. I wasn't prepped for what I saw. Uh, that was unnecessary. Yeah. Uh, the li- that line? That I wasn't prepped for what I saw. Yeah. From within the sphere fell a fetus, the likes of which I've never seen before. It was primarily fish-like, but certain Called aspects... It. Called it. Yeah. Day Called gone. It. Day, day gone. gone. Day, day gone. gone. Uh, greatly resembled a human embryo, except except its skin was translucent and pale white. Its spine was longer and more flexible than it should have been. And it had another pair of arms and hands instead of legs. And another. And it didn't have a face. Oh, no. It's underwater slender, man. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> it wore a suit and tie. <laughs> Ocean slender, man, for the win. The small, still living feet at Jesus turned its vacant head to look at me. I suddenly recalled all those people on the boat, standing there, arms outstretched, gazing at the moon with a bliss on their faces. Oh, Jesus. And emptiness in the hollowed out skulls of their corpses. I threw the damned thing back into the ocean. Jesus okay. Christ. This has taken a 180 turn from surreal and dreamlike to very clinical and scientific. Yeah. And that's not a bad thing per se. However, I do feel like, and part of me hates this because I don't want to be, I'm going to say, just do what all the no sleep stories do where it's I'm insert profession and I found insert eldritch thing or cryptid. But um, if there was a little bit of like, you know, if this was, this can still be epistolary, but if it was, hey, you know, we were both on the same marine biology expedition. Um, our, our ship got wrecked or whatever on a sandbar. I ended up over here. You ended up over there. It's like that would give just an iota of like background that mm-hmm. I think would be like, I would appreciate because mm-hmm. we went from very like, I don't know where I am and I'm in a magical princess tower and there's there's fish that sing everywhere and now it's like there's human embryo fish people eggs in the bottom of the sea. So it's yeah. a little a little uneven, but I, I'm still enjoying this a lot. Like, unless I really want to know where this goes. Switch that we don't know. Like that, the voice feels a little different. I That's think very we're different. at too. Yeah. You know? I think that and I assume it's the same person. It's hard to tell. I think one of the tricky parts is the fact that one we're not really sure who this character is. We mm-hmm. don't. The only thing is we really know is that he there. He I assume it's he is living in a lighthouse. Well, and, and we, like they, they stopped it, signing off. Yeah, it, they used to have. What, what is it? Your what dear was it? friend, your dear, your friend, dear and friend. And they stopped signing off. So this either is, this is the other person writing back or it's the same person. And they just stopped doing that. But that, but then that should be made clear. I mean, yeah. well, well, let's let's see if that gets cleared up. Let's keep let's put a pin in it because okay. I think it's a very astute remark, on, and I I agree. Um, because I was really digging the kind of like surreal vibe, and while this is really cool and the visuals are really cool, the the, the mm-hmm. voice the change of voice is throwing me. 
it, it's like, very unless, jarring. Unless it gets revealed later that maybe this is like we're we're jumping to different points in time, maybe. But then again, they, they're referring. They're also referring to the the people in the boat, the scooped out skulls. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah that's the str- so odd. This, this feels like it's now writing in a diary instead of to a person. Yeah, yeah. It, it might be like a moment of clarity. Oh, perhaps. that's true. But maybe brought on by the can't tell uh, encounter yeah. with the embryo. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, that would be weird because the closer you go to Eldritch stuff, the more crazy you go. Yeah, that's so. This that's is kind of inconsistent. Although it would be interesting if that was it, it was somehow the opposite, and then now and and more and the lucidity is mm-hmm. actually more dangerous than the lunacy. I, I oh, think maybe. It, I think mm. there just needs to be a bit of consistency. Are we? Are we? Well, we have to read the whole thing. First. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's, yeah. Well, we'll, like I said, let's put a pin in it and let's come back to it after sure. we've read a couple more. Okay. <clears throat> Six human snake. Oh shit! Okay. <laughs> Someone's fetish. <laughs> the great white worm. No. Oh no. god, no. no! How many mongooses are in this story? Oh. Six. Mo- no, no, four mong. Leg- <laughs> legitimate trauma from that fucking story. <laughs> oh. Admittedly, this isn't a fish that actually exists, but it's one that has haunted my dreams, much like the white worm, ever since I explored (laughs) those towers, and I feel that it's important enough for you to know about. In my dreams, I am floating in the middle of the zone of avoidance. I cannot move my body and float aimlessly at the whim of the silent ocean, surrounded on all sides by the oppressive gaze of the pale white egg towers. The stillness of the waters is suddenly disturbed by intense movement. And in the corner of my peripheral vision, it appears. Swimming around the towers at the very edge of my vision, barely visible, is a massive, infinitely long, worm-like creature composed entirely of faces. That's some Junji Ito shit right there. Human faces. The water is moved and disturbed not only because of the movement of this massive being, but also because of the horrible cacophony of screams emitted by the faces. Awesome. Thousands, yeah. millions, infinite faces locked in a state of constant drowning. But Fuck something yeah. about the screams, and this is going to sound horrible of me, something about the screaming is beautiful, like a song. A beautiful, horrible song that makes you cry with joy and weep in fear. The vibration consumes me and shakes me, devouring, eternal. But the worst part of all of this is that right before I wake up, the worm's head swims directly at me, barreling at my helpless floating body at a terrifying speed. And the head that I am confronted with, the face that devours me, it's yours. Your face. Sometimes when I look at you out there on that sandbar, something about your presence feels prim- primally, lo- bleh, primally wrong. It's hard to say. It's like there's a massive shape to your form, and my mind is unable to perceive. Something beyond my vision's capability. The space around you seems to warp when I try to understand what it is. What you are. Stop staring at me. You're never going to write back. Okay. Cool. Then I'll do this column. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. It was very late at night. You still weren't asleep. I walked down the spiral staircase of the lighthouse to the lit basement below. You were in the lab, fussing over research, fussing over researching eight new species of fish you had discovered. Your pride and joy. You were the first, the fruit of your latest dive, and you found them all on the same day. The luck. Though you mostly enjoyed being the one to name them, as charmingly uncreative as your names were, you had them all in eight separate aquariums. Piles of notes, sketches, and observations stacked in front of each tank. The fish were all so wildly different from each other, and yet there was something curious about them, something vague that you simply couldn't pinpoint. It was driving you crazy. You were losing sleep over it. The next day, you had to leave for a month to visit your family on the mainland. Oh, how it agonized you to leave your new new discovery behind. I had stayed behind to look after the lighthouse and tend to the fish. I still remember the look on your face when you returned a month later to discover eight identical fish in each of the tanks. Despite their wildly different appearances, they were all the same kind of fish. Each one a different stage in the life cycle of a single species. All different aspects of the same animal, like the phases of the moon. Ooh. Ooh. Cool. I gotta wonder. Maybe these poems are from the perspective of the 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 person our protagonist is trying to write to. I I don't. Yeah, I don't know. It, now it sounds. So we had a 
they mentioned a shipwreck in the beginning. And mm-hmm. I think we all kind of assumed that they like were sailing or whatever. And then they ended up here. But maybe they were here all along. And then something happened to their main mode of transportation to the mainland. Mm-hmm. And they lost their partner, what have you. And they're writing to them out of like like a delusion made from grief. Mm-hmm. Huh. And their partner was like a marine biologist or something. I don't know. I don't maybe. know. Maybe. God, this is this is a tough one. This is this is weird. And I like it. It's yeah, I really like it. Even I, even the, so, this is a journey. The worm with all the faces. Uh, so, so, <laughs> we already had a motif so, of like a singing singing fish with like human faces. And, yeah. So one of the things I, I um, <laughs> yes, crazy. Uh, one of the things that I realized recently is that um, uh, because like there are certain things that I'm afraid of. Um, so I'm afraid of haunts for sure. Um, Mm -hmm. but I had the, um, uh, I, I was lucky enough that I actually got to do a tour of all the haunts at Knott's, uh, for Not Scary Farm, uh, with the lights on. Cause I love the aesthetic behind all these and the designs. I just, I Mm -hmm. can't stand scare actors for all those who know me. So I got to see all these, uh, great designs. So, but then I went through one called Waxworks and we we get to like this huge statue that moves and it's supposed to look like a, basically a fucked up creature with a bunch of faces, like um, faces stuck together. And it bothered me. There was, uh, I felt a much discomfort and I felt Mm -hmm. that same discomfort with uh, uh, the movie Slither as well. When the bodies were combining together. (laughs) Yeah. And I was like, there's something there. It's something about, combined bodies like that i don't know it it, it, it makes me feel uncomfortable. So the body horror of that gets yeah you know. a little bit which is mm-hmm. weird because i can i can i can read junji ito just fine and look at the that sort of thing and be like yeah hmm, this is great it's like awesome you're doing great work man but i don't know sometimes if i think if it if it's a, a little too realistic or if it looks I think there's a very human fear of losing one's agency and identity yeah, and being combined with something else. And then like a very primal struggle of like, how would you exist? He would be fighting this being you're forcibly tied to. Um, that's, I, I think everyone shares that to a degree, even if mm-hmm. it's not so visceral, it's just this idea of losing all of your control. And Gee. just forever, and not even just losing it, sharing it, like having to struggle would just be a nightmare scenario if it was like non consensual. Jeez, way to cycle on psychologize <laughs> me. <laughs> Welcome to Ultra Mega Master HD re release bonus feature. <laughs> Send in your fears, and Abysme will psychoanalyze you. <laughs> And then future David will edit in some appropriate background music, except it won't be appropriate at all for the situation. <laughs> Except he might not, because it depends on when this episode releases. True. <laughs> um, it's back around to me again, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Seven, the moon. It's going to fall on Termina in three days. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> when people used to look at the moon, they would send along their gaze, all of their, they would send along with their gaze, all of their hopes and dreams, their wishes and aspirations. Separated lovers, no matter how far apart, could be together in heart and spirit as long as they gaze at the moon together. It connected people across cultures and lifestyles, no matter how different. We all looked at the moon with the same love and wistful hopefulness. They would see in the moon what they wanted to see. But along with the positive, people also unknowingly sent the negative to the moon as well. Their fears, their flaws, their prejudices, their hate. All the bad and the good requires to spring from all the bad that the good requires to spring from all forms of happiness have an underlying bed of sadness that it feeds on situations and feelings that people want to escape from the tunnel is far larger than the light at the end of it. After all, I like, I like that line actually. Mm -hmm. Maybe the moon was full, full to bursting with everything that we had sent it throughout our human history. Maybe the moon had grown to love us and wanted to give something back to us, but the moon wasn't us. It couldn't truly understand us. It was confused by the negative things we unknowingly sent to it. And that's why what happened, happened. That is a wonderful mythological idea of the cycle of the moon 
is driven by humanity making offerings to it. And when it's a full moon, it's literally full. And then mm-hmm. it slowly dispenses everything thrown into it. And it's like a purgative thing. That's mm. awesome. Like I really like that. That might exist in some culture for all we fucking know. But it might, yeah. That's a really cool idea because the sun, as the other, like the sun and the moon are typically seen in the yin yang in old cultures, of course. It's a whole duality um, thing, yeah. But like, unless it's an eclipse, the sun doesn't have phases. It's just always there. The moon has phases. And that's really mm. cool. I like that. Moon has moods, baby. Yeah. It has vibes. <laughs> I'm really for that silent moon vibe. <laughs> I used to play bass for silent moon vibe. <laughs> oh, that's oh, I'm going to steal that. Yeah, the silent moon vibe <laughs> is pretty good. Yeah, that you know that that sounds like an abysmy track right there. Yes, mm, that sounds yeah, like an abysmy that. track. I mean, you did release a track once called "The Moon Is a Friend." I did, I did. Uh, that was that was like a because I, I made the sun will destroy everything, and then someone said, "Okay, now do one that says the moon is a friend." I was like, "Okay, cool." Was that Sakura? Um, I think it was like Zath, Sakura, and some other people. Like it was, oh, it was a group request or something. That makes sense. I used that track in. Um, I think I used that track, and it's always a zombie. I think oh, you used a lot of my music in that one. Yes, <laughs> I did. Well, I used pretty much all of your music. All of it is your music. So, oh, man, yeah. One of these days we'll get we'll get that one series off the ground. One of these days when I'm you know when I'm more YouTube famous because of this HD remake. <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, just like the American dream, if you aspire enough to it, it's going to happen. Look, everybody, it's not, you it's need not to like buy, the market is oversaturated or anything. Everyone needs to buy the 25th HD re-release with the uh, special UCA coin in there that you get with every copy. So we can make um, more series come to life. It's really cool. It's not going to be a janky piece of shit or anything <laughs> like that. Buy it for the coin. All right. Yeah, on one side, it's got fuckable guard of war. <laughs> the other side, it's got a turkey vulture. See, we're leaning into the memes, the old memes again. <laughs> uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Or maybe I'm simply being too romantic and things aren't as black and white as I am making them out to be. Maybe this is just my desperate attempt to rationalize the irrational, an attempt to make sense of an event that was far beyond human understanding. More than likely, this was simply an event that was set in motion many eons ago long before humans even existed, and there was nothing we could do to predict or stop it. But it really helps that mind to cope when you try to anthropomorphize these things. Because I was watching the night the moon cracked open like an egg, and the white, worm-like miscarriage of our hopes and fears poured out of it like shattered womb and into the ocean below. Holy shit. Yeah! God damn. Damn. This is some fucking revelation shit going on. I've definitely heard and seen in sci-fi stuff, the moon is just a big egg, you know? (laughs) But this is a great way to make it eldritch. This is awesome. Well, and what that is the strongest part of this story so far is maybe the moon was this. I mean, maybe I'm imagining it, but I literally saw the moon fucking miscarriage. God damn, that is strong. (laughs) That is so good. (laughs) Uh, poisoning the sky, flooding the world with a dark sea, even extending its reach to the sun and snuffing it out. Whoa. Again, what? this is some revelation shit going Ooh. on right now. Ooh. You were watching with me. It was the last time we were together. Without breaking your gaze from the moon, you stood up, walked into the ocean, and disappeared. You walked right in like you thought you could breathe it. What did you see? What did you see in the moon that compelled you so? And now, five years later, here you are on a sandbar that never existed, just standing there, staring at me. That's all you ever do now. You stand there and you stare at me and your pale face glows softly like a worm, cold light, like a worm, cold light. (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) I was on a roll. (laughs) Fuck. I saw this worm stuff is getting me. Yeah. I know you aren't the person I think you are, who I wish you were, who I want you to be. If things were different, I would probably be able to see you for what you really are. But I do not care anymore. I have nothing left. There is nothing left. I want to be with you again, even if it isn't really you. I am writing to you because you exist. If you did not exist, I would not be writing to you. And I do not wish to live in a reality where what it, where that is the case. When distant lovers used to look at the moon, they would be connected no matter how far apart they were. I am going to climb to the top of the lighthouse and gaze at the moon. Wherever you are, wherever you really are, you will feel my gaze reflected by its cold light. I will 
I know you will come for me and we will look together. Oh, shit. I oh, have, sh- man, I, it is it is rare that romance can be interwoven into stories like this where it actually feels compelling. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times it's just like when we're talking about Fallout 4, you're a- you married you have a kid go find him whatever you care about your kid but like this is actually earned and you feel the lunacy and the desperation of someone missing their partner and that's really nice yeah holy shit the next uh, i'm looking at chapter eight and i'm oh, oh yeah i'll we'll have to break this up all right chapter eight patrol report december 16th 2117. This Holy is in shit. the fit in the future. Holy shit. So this <laughs> was written in 2017. That's either a typo or yeah, no, this is a hundred years in the future. Damn. I'm yeah. thinking hundred years in the future. That That'd actually cool. that makes sense. That makes this a sci-fi horror. Fuck yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the lighthouse keeper disappeared today. I watched the whole thing from my boat. Still unsure of what to make of the whole thing. Not sure if he's dead, but he's definitely gone. We have a gender for our uh, lighthouse keeper now. Oh, we do. Or at least presumed by the... Yeah, we'll say he. (laughs) Yeah, he. Yeah, that's fine. He was always a weird guy. Kept to himself. Loved fish. Poor social skills. Lonely. Probably sexually frustrated. (laughs) (laughs) Talking about fucking moons and stuff? I don't know. It was weird. (laughs) But he was still damn good at his job. And it's weird to think that he's actually gone. However, I suppose his area didn't really need a lighthouse keeper any anymore anyway, considering that everybody there has been long dead. What well, few people are left there usually don't last very long. I think the poor guy was the last person left there. Over the past few days, I kept finding bottled messages floating in my patrol area. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, no. They were all written by him. Oh. He was seemingly obsessed with a woman that only he could see was trapped on a sandbar not from far from his island. Thing is, there aren't any sandbars in his area. Oh, Dude went nor, insane. Yeah. Nor, yeah. nor any solid ground for a thousand miles. His area was submerged almost entirely back when the moon broke open. Oh, that did Wait, happen. What? The moon actually broke open. Holy <laughs> shit. Wait a minute. Okay, the moon controls the tides. So if the moon gets <gasps> fucked up, that changes the ocean. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. that's why you've seen all these weird fucking fish. Did somebody like, like, blow up the moon? Or the moon? Or the moon? Well, again, they broke open. Something hatched from within the moon. Oh, my God. He's lucky his lighthouse was located. So it really is 2117. Fuck me. He's lucky his lighthouse was located at such a high altitude. These letters were unusual, even for him. I sensed something was wrong, so I decided to pay him a visit to see what was going on. It took me a few days of open sea travel. Oh, it's Waterworld. Holy shit. Mm, yeah. It's Kevin Costner. <laughs> Kevin <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> oh, damn. I should... K- K- Kayla will now be playing the role part of Kevin Costner, playing the part of this random patrolman. Holy <laughs> I think I thought Kevin, you were referring to that Kevin Costner was the uh, lighthouse guy. Lighthouse. Well, the lighthouse keeper could be. No, I don't know. Um, he'd have to have gills if it's uh, the lighthouse keeper. I don't That's know. That's true. As you know. Yeah, and he's going night. <laughs> I arrived. At- Remember Waterworld? <laughs> <laughs> I arrived at night. Not that time of the time of day matters anymore. When my patrol board boat neared the island and the lighthouse was in view something in my head told me to slow down and keep my distance there was something wrong up ahead something going on that wasn't i wasn't supposed to see and i saw it all washed up lifelessly on the shore it was a massive abomination a colossal pale worm that glowed with a cold light its body was covered in countless human arms and hands that moved around like a diseased cilia cilia thank you uh, there were a deep. Cr- they were deep crimson red and an elastic, stretchy quality to them. Uh, there was an obby head uh, like structure at the front of it, and it didn't appear to have facial features or of any kind. Its long, thick body trailed off from the beach and into the ocean, and seemed to continue infinitely into the pitch black depths below. From my distant vantage point, I watched as its limp body began to stir. With a nauseating sequence of movements, the creature's many arms flailed and struggled to lift its head, body, sorry, not, but 
lift its body off the sand like dozens of legs, straining under the intense weight of a hum- of the main body. The animal would begin crawling onto the shore with a distant sense of purpose, its featureless head sniffing the air around it. Oh. Is this undergoing advanced, like super advanced evolution? Because mm. things from, like we evolved from shit in the ocean that eventually came ashore. Oh. So this is like, it's like whatever this is, is going back, is like slowly taking everything back to the sea. Yeah. Oh, no, it's coming from the sea. Well, I don't know, because everything's water world now. I don't know. But like. Well, there's there's very few people left. Yeah. As far as we know. So. Mm. Um, are uh, you good to keep going? You want to yeah, tag? I, I can. I can keep going. OK. As a worm lumbered uh, towards the lighthouse and pulled more of itself out of the ocean, its tail section previously submerged into the under the depth started to become visible. I'm not quite sure how to say this, but its tail was its tail was covered in human faces, living human faces. Oh, God. Each one gasped for air as it was brought above the surface of the water. Their eyes would dart around alarmed and their mouths would scream and gasp, but none of them could make any sound. And its tail kept going and going. There was seemingly no end to it. No matter how far the creature went on the island, its tail continued into the Black Sea, an endless column of sil- uh, of silently screaming faces locked in fear and agony. Oh, <laughs> wait, that's right. The worm is just, oh, God. The worm wow. is covered in faces. This is its babies. And the wow. baby, oh. Holy shit. Hmm. Want me to pick up here? Yeah, go for it. It wrapped its hundreds of arms around the breadth of the lighthouse, and with large, laborious movements, it began pulling its massive frame up the shaft of the lighthouse, giggity. At the very (laughs) top of the lighthouse was the keeper, the poor bastard. He was staring up at the moon with his arms outstretched and a stupid smile on his face. It was like a statue. I, I couldn't do anything about it. Call me a coward, but I couldn't dare draw near. What could I do anyway? I'm just a bleeding patroller. When the creature reached the top, it fixed itself to the lighthouse like a cicada, and the arms on the creature's back that began to grow like red trees, spreading and branching out like wings, eventually budding and growing little eyes or fish or something that broke off and flopped around on the ground below, some of them making it oh, into the ocean. Okay. That's the origin of the eye fish. Oh, shit. Because, oh. yeah, everything was a life cycle of one species. Holy fuck. This thing that came out of the moon, yeah. As I continued to watch, something in my head suddenly flipped on like a light switch, something primal, instinctive. I subconsciously looked up at the moon, and I I looked back, and the keeper was gone. The creature had dismounted from the lighthouse and was sitting squat on the ground, holding its body poised like an attentive salamander, staring directly at me, staring with its, uh, its featureless head. I'm not sure how long this went on for. There were things going on at this point that made me lose track of how much time passed. Eventually, in a flurry of motion, the creature flailed and sprinted back into the sea, disappearing from sight and taking all of its screaming faces with it. I waited in the boat for a very long while until I was sure that the coast was clear, doing my best to take in everything that just happened before docking my boat at the lighthouse. Judging by the keeper's letters, along with everything that I personally witnessed, I think it would be best if I stayed here for a while to see what happens next. Ah, shit. No. 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 These oceans aren't safe anymore. This is Full Moon Face Patrol Unit 8 signing off. End report. And David, take us home with a PS. Okay, there's a long gap, and then you have to help me. Please, I'm scared to death. Do not let my CEO know this, but I lied. Fuck me, I lied. I could hear them as soon as I looked up at the moon. They were singing. All of them were screaming. I mean, singing. It was the most beautiful song I've ever heard. It was so beautiful that I could not keep myself from crying, and it was the worst sound I have ever heard in my life. And that creature, when it turned to look at me, I lied during that part too. It had his face. I probably don't have much time left. It's amusing how we used to think that the Mariana Trench was the deepest part of the ocean, but I don't. But I know that's wrong. As soon as I looked at that face, I knew we were wrong. There's some place even deeper than that. And it's wherever the moon's reflection went when it disappeared from the surface of the ocean forever. Shit. Wow. 
Mike. <laughs> this is so imaginative. I love mm-hmm. this. I like. I mean, I feel like someone said, "Oh, what if the moon was the egg?" And then someone just went from there yeah. and was like, "But what if this happened?" I'm like, "Oh my god!" <sighs> I I couldn't even think of this. Think of something like this if you gave me years. Jesus. This is this is this is a perfect like way to do Lovecraftian literature. Um, it's just a, so surreal and unhinged. In a unique um, way, too. Yeah. Very, yeah. It does the whole like madness thing, but it actually um it doesn't feel tropey mm-hmm. because someone went mad and someone else witnessed it, and now the cycle continues, and it's not just like I found a book that said go here and you're gonna go fucking insane, dude, and then I followed it because whatever. Like, no, there's there's justification for it. Uh mm-hmm. that is and it, and I, I love that it's not just I was out in a cemetery and dug up something. It's like the fucking world has been altered by these weird eldritch events. And this is a, a smattering of what that could look like. Yeah. This is so good. This is also as the whole horror of, um, similar to when we discussed Romina of like, something is happening and there's nothing you can do to prevent it. This is just the world we're in now. This is like, there was nothing they could have done to prevent the moon from suddenly hatching. And yeah, it just happened. It just there's, happened. There's little symbolic things I'm realizing about the story. Like in that first poem, the fact that it ends with them biting open an apple and there's a worm inside. Think about that. Yeah. I the think moon, the yeah. apple, the worm, yeah. the thing like, oh, this is really well crafted. I mean, uh, taking the pin back out of that thing we mentioned earlier, does the the does the tonal shift or not tonal that shift, but does be- the, the 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 voice shift? still feel a little odd so yeah like it's weird that it goes from i got my scuba gear on and i went down and i saw all this stuff and then the very next passage is i had a weird dream about this worm thing with a bunch of faces like Mm -hmm. you could have couched all of that in the dream i dreamt that i was in the ocean there were these megalithic towers underneath the water with pearls in them but i think the pearls are eggs because a fetus hatched from one or something like that like because everything else about this is either dreamlike or very close to it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I do think that one part of being very scientific and clinical could just be combined with the uh, succeeding chapter and just be like, I dreamt all this shit because everything else feels like a fucking dream in this. Why not this too? Yeah. It, yeah. It, in all honestly, in this, it's so easily adjusted. Like it's, you could have just said, I dreamt this. This mm-hmm. is how, what I dreamt. And then, uh, like it's very easily adjustable and then don't have to change much else other than that. Cause I, I agree with you. It just feels a bit out of place. It almost feels, it, it almost goes way too story. Like instead of for the rest of it, like you said, it does feel dreamlike. It does sound like it, it does sound like uh, he's actually writing to this woman. And this is the only part that's like, okay, we just entered. Now he just sounds like he's writing in his diary. Yeah. Well, it, it, is it? It seems it, the weird thing I think could have been focused on is I kind of liked, and maybe this is just me and inter- me reading into it, but the idea that the character is somehow becoming more lucid as time goes on because of the presence of what they of who he thinks is of uh, is his lover nearby. You know, it, it, it more lucid, but lucid of fantastical reality shattering events so yeah. it's this weird dichotomy of i'm re- i'm things are coming into focus but those things don't make sense i i just thought my really, phases i just yeah. i just realized something <laughs> so you know how the tail has all these heads or all these faces yeah uh-huh. and it goes into the water what if i mean what if one of those faces is hers and it's the tails popping out of the ocean and that's what he sees i think that might be it maybe huh oh because yeah because it stared at the patrolman at the end there for some amount of time so maybe it was popping out of the ocean and just looking at him and it was big enough that he thought it was a sandbar mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. you might be right and it's not like you can tell what time of day because apparently it's eternal night now that the sun is gone or the moon, the moon, but the gone, moon yeah. is still over there. But some uh, the thing that is cryptic at the end was the re- re- reference that the moon is no longer reflected in the ocean. Apparently, no, the moon like 
that yeah like the moon die it's not there anymore well the, the moon the moon is still there but like it cracked open something came that cracked open and stuff came out of the moon so even though the moon is still there basically it's shell is still hanging in the sky i guess yeah yeah but, and, like but there's, there's no, not enough of a presence to really affect anything and somehow it's glowing even without the light of the sun because the sun is no longer a thing it's odd I'm curious how that ha- what how that there's a, there's a lot of interesting world building here that we only get like snapshots of yeah and I think that's kind of neat mm-hmm. yeah oh, man no wonderful wonderful imagery yeah um oh my god uh kite line did a fantastic job with this honestly very good very yeah. very good uh there's a link uh I wonder if uh, yeah there's a link to a uh... page not found <laughs> a what now page oh not found. dang it. Yeah. No. Well, well it's, from we 20, have this. it's from 2017. That's so. true. That's true. Uh-huh. Well, well, Cthulhu <laughs> no absolutely knows what to send us. So thank you, Cthulhu, our deep dark master. Ooh. Once again. Thank you for <laughs> influencing these writers to inspire <laughs> planting your uh turgid dreams in their minds. Oh damn. Fevered imaginations. Oh man. Um, I'm glad, you know, again, I only kind of speculated what this was going to be in deal wise. And I'm, but I'm, I'm glad you were on board to do this one with us, Abismi. So thank you for Absolutely. joining us. Absolutely. <laughs> anytime, anytime. Uh, is there anything you'd like to uh, plug while you're here? Uh, uh, I do a show with Alan called The Jameson Tapes. Um, please. Uh, if you're into us reviewing horror movies and getting absolutely blasted whilst we do so, that's definitely a fun thing to check out. And we have a lot planned. We wrapped our first season uh, fairly recently, and we have a lot more planned for season two. So uh, definitely keep your eyes and your ears out for that. Uh, I've started releasing some of my music on Spotify and Apple Music and a bunch of other shit. Uh, a lot of like my lo-fi stuff. Um, so if you like that, uh, you know, please, uh, show me some support. It should be in all places that music is found. Um, don't look for know. Abysme. Yeah, no, just look for Abysme. Um, and, uh, the other ambient stuff I made in the past that's up on YouTube and SoundCloud. That's, you know, CC by a, feel free to, you know, you can find that, but yeah, no, I'm trying to go in a different direction with my music and do just more branch out and stuff. So yeah, that's kind of all I've got to plug. Fantastic. Really, all I have to plug is say that if you also like this and the Jameson tapes, you can check out the other shows we have on the Created Horror Network, including Darkly Lit um, and The Witching Hour and Midnight Marinara. Many fine shows we produce on that. If you like what you've heard here, please give us some feedback. We always appreciate that, whether it's an interaction in some way with a comment or an upvote or a like or whatever, whatever you're doing on whatever platform you are uh, viewing this or listening to this on. We always appreciate the feedback. And if you'd like to submit a story for us to read, please email us at midnightmarinera at gmail.com. Uh, you can send us stories you have written. You can, If you have expressed permission from the authors, as in the case of Cthulhu, or maybe coercing if in Cthulhu's <laughs> case, uh, you can send those along to us. You can also join our Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash midnightmarinera, where we will take suggestions. In fact, uh, Cthulhu reached out to us because of Patreon, and I bumped this one right to the top because, yes, Cthulhu is giving me real Earth money, which is a very strange thing. Um, I don't know how the, uh, you know, this elder god, this great eldritch, or great old one, no, the great old ones, are, but yeah, um, sent this to us, but here it is nonetheless. But yeah, I bumped this one to the top because of its uh, being a patron, and I tried to keep that sort of the case with this show. Uh, also, you can check out the Choice Dregs and several other extra segments that are only there for patrons. I want to thank everybody who has been a patron or is, and is currently a patron for their support over the years. We're actually, one thing I've been anticipating, and keep an eye out for news of this, this year is going to be Midnight Marinera's 10th anniversary. Ooh. So I've got some things in the back of my head. It just depends on how much time and how much effort I can put into them. But I would, I would like to do something to celebrate that. So, um, and, uh, Kayla and I have been talking, we have some, we have something fun planned for this year's, uh, Halloween revival of the show. So keep an ear out for that. 
Woo! Wow. Well, <clears throat> um, I I should stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, intrepid listeners. This is the Pasta Shade, the host of Midnight Marinara, and this podcast is part of CreativeHorror.com, a network of podcasts and creators working together to build a constructive community of horror fans. For more content like this, visit us at CreativeHorror.com. <laughs>